everybody, and welcome to another episode of Death By, where contestants will earn reps for their arguments for a chance to stand on top of the podium pedestal. I am your host, Lauren Khalil. Whoever I decide has the best argument through the final round will earn 30 seconds to talk about a topic of their choosing. On today's episode, we have affiliate owner and CrossFit analyst Chase Ingram with Get With The Programming. Founder and head coach of Underdogs Athletics, Justin Kotler. And sports reporter and CrossFit affiliate owner, Lauren Smith, on the show for the very first time. Welcome, Lauren. We'll try to keep the other two gentlemen under wraps today. No but shot. No Chase shot. and Justin, they are probably the most aggressive people on the show. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Yeah. Luckily, I know them both personally, and we'll have it out face to face if it all goes a little bit awry. Yeah, we'll be friends after. That's fine. Yeah. I'm cool with that. We all leave friends, even if somebody doesn't get as many points as he thinks that he deserves. Ridiculous. <laughs> I get robbed every week. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Maybe this is your week. Maybe it's not. Uh, I'm killing, killing my dreams. Hell. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, let's play Death By. We'll get into it in round number one. The Barbell Spin, they recently put out an article taking a look at 11 women from the 2023 CrossFit Games who are not competing as individuals this season. Within the list, there are various reasons from having families, switching from individual to team, dealing with an injury, or just not signing up for the Open. Just last week, we saw games athlete Ellie Turner and Olympic weightlifter Maddie Rogers both say they were sitting out due to injury, but also to get healthy mentally or avoid burnout. So why do you think it is so prevalent, specifically in women, that we're seeing less of them compete as individuals? Chase Ingram, we will let you kick off round number one. I don't see it specifically. I mean, yes, there's more women maybe that are coming to mind when it comes to this, but I don't think it's anything out of the ordinary. Because if you, like you said, when you listed off the reasons for women, these women in particular not competing, I mean, two had to do with life. Annie's pregnant and Kelly Baker's trying to trying to get pregnant. For going team, you've got, what, Jamie Simmons, Matilda Garns, Ella Vunger, and then um, um, Emily DeRoy. Right? Like they're going team. Some are at the end of their career, so they go team. Some are in the beginning of them, and they're retooling to go team. Like I just see a various number of reasons to, uh, that we see that. Now, what we might see is more, I would say, spotlight drawn to some of these athletes of why they're going out. And when you're talking about mental health or physical health with, with uh, Maddie Rogers or Ellie Turner or um, what uh, Mal O'Brien went through and that Haley's coming back from, like you've got Haley Adams coming back. You've got Tia Toomey coming back. Those are huge names coming back into the fold. I don't see anything wrong with this. I don't see anything abnormal. I just see life, life in general, whether it's injury, team, mental health, physical health. This doesn't shock me. It doesn't surprise me. And I just think they might be putting more of a spotlight to it than, say, other athletes are. I don't see anything wrong with this at all. Hmm. Two points for Chase. Lauren, what's your take on this one? Honestly, not dissimilar to Chase at all. Um, but I do think if we're looking specifically at that mental health angle, that we have some really high profile athletes who very courageously were the first to kind of to go down this path and say, no, I need to look after me. And if we take it completely away from the CrossFit spectrum, look at Simone Biles. Simone Biles, one of the biggest and most like famous gymnasts of all time, a young female went, you know what? it's not all about competition anymore. And I want to enjoy my life, live my life. And, and in doing so kind of opened like the opportunity for others to follow suit without feeling this sense of guilt or a sense of not doing their duty. And I think that's really important for females specifically. And it doesn't matter whether it's CrossFit, whether it's gymnastics or it's other Olympic sports. I know plenty of Olympic mountain bikers who've done exactly the same. And it's, you know, I feel like for women more so than men, there have been people who have gone, you know what, it's okay to do this if you need it. And I think that's maybe like part of it. And the other side is exactly what Chase said, life. Like people have lives. <laughs> Four points for Lauren. Justin, what do you think here? Well, you know, I, <clears throat> I think with what Chase talked about a little bit, you know, obviously there's some circumstances with life, right? With uh, uh, some of the women um, choosing to have children and you have a few athletes going team. But I think it is interesting. 
you know, a few years ago, uh, we looked at Mal O'Brien and Emma Carey as the two athletes who essentially were were the ones that Tia was going to kind of pass the mantle to. Like that, that's who we were looking at as as possibly the two athletes to take the reins as the dominant female forces in the sport. And it's very interesting to me that both of them are out of the sport right now. Uh, and, you know, I, so I don't think we can brush it under the rug. Um, you know, whether or not it was just, you're talking about two athletes that started, uh, CrossFit very, very young, who had unbelievably high expectations very early, a lot of pressure put on them, both by themselves and obviously uh, the community, the media, et cetera. I'm not blaming anyone, but I do think it's interesting that we have, you know, two super high profile athletes, perhaps the, you know, the two best ever coming out of the teen division, other than maybe Emma Lawson, um, who, who now, you know, have had to take a break from the sport um, because of, you know, whether, whatever you want to call it, whether it's burnout, whether it's, uh, you know, I know Emma came and spoke about religion, but I know she was dealing with some burnout as well. Um, so I don't know what the answers are, but I don't think that it's, that it's just kind of like, you know, pomp and circumstance that it's just like, ah, whatever. No, I don't think so. I, I, I think it's very interesting to, to, to see um, that you've got two, you know, monster athletes, um, you know, two who have the potential of winning or being on the podium who, who are 18, 19 years old, who are no longer in the sport. That's, that's a little bit concerning. Mm. Three points for Justin. I do uh, agree that life plays into this, but just when you compare the men's leaderboard to the women, I mean, it's so obvious how many shifts we're having. Of course, you eliminate the factor of women giving birth <laughs> because men aren't physically at least giving birth. They're having children in other ways with, you know, their wives. But uh, I just wonder if it could be a combination of burnout that maybe the ma male athletes aren't talking about it. Do any of you have any insight on that? Or, I mean, Chase, obviously you come from um, starting CrossFit when it started, but just from your experience, seeing other athletes, maybe something you've dealt with as well. I, well, this is why I don't try to speculate or put myself in other people's shoes, especially when it comes to mental health, because I don't have that problem. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean other people don't have that problem. It's never bothered me. I've never had burnout. I've always been competitive. Even if I wasn't competitive, I would still try to win. Like I would try to lit, win a deadlift workout knowing full well I'm getting last. Right? So like that's <laughs> just not a position that I can put myself in to speculate on, which is why I didn't bring it into my answer of why I think things are happening. Because when it comes to that, it is so subjective to the individual's experience and, and, and to that individual themselves. And so, no, I don't understand that. But that doesn't mean that it's not happening and it doesn't mean I don't empathize with people's situations. But for me as a competitor, there was nothing I wanted to do more than compete every single day at every single thing that could possibly be out there, regardless of what it is. Now, if you look at some of the, I would say, common threads I see that Justin even talked to is you have these young female athletes that are in their teens. Mm -hmm. Haley is one of those athletes too. Haley had a lot of success in the teen division. And then as soon as she aged up, it was like, when is she going to make the games and maybe win the games as an individual? She's just a couple years ahead of Emma Carey and ahead of Mal O'Brien, but she was put in that pressure cooker just like everybody else. But the common thread I see is not just the age, it's the situations they put themselves in. You have these young teenage athletes, these young female teens that remove themselves from their homes and their social circles and put themselves into camps where there is nothing to relate to anybody in those camps other than push-ups and sit-ups. So I see that as one thing. And then maybe the pressure of that situation. I don't know what it is. I just see that as a common thread. Another one of those things is like on the women's side, there's only one person winning the CrossFit Games for the last seven years. That was Tia Toomey. There wasn't a question of that happening. On the men's side, it is way more wide open. So maybe some of the guys think, I'm going to stay in the game because I have a shot. It does like Rich is gone, Matt is gone. I know Justin went back to back, but there was still an opportunity to beat Justin when the time came. So that could be a part of that where it's like, listen, I'm just going to, I'm just, you know, T is back. I'm going team or T is back. I'm going to take the year off and get healthy. That could be a part of that too. Kind of piggyback, off, piggybacking off of that. I, I think, 
you, you talked about the difference between men and women. You see that 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 uh, athletes like Haley, like Emma, uh, like both Emmas, like Mal, women tend to be able to compete with the I'm gonna say the with the big girls, right? At a very young age, you we haven't really seen any male teen competitors who would be competitive uh, in the individual field. Um, we have seen that on the on the female side. So I think they're kind of getting thrust into the spotlight sooner with more pressure, um, not quite maybe as mature emotionally or, or mentally, but but physically they're on a different planet than than say the other than say men at 16, 17. We're we're seeing most of, you know, I guess who who's the youngest male is probably Dallin or, or James Sprague. And and yeah. yes, they've uh -huh. been competitive, but they haven't necessarily and Justin was young too, but not at 17, not at 18. We weren't talking about them winning the games at 17, 18. We were talking about Mal and Emma, both Emma's, you know, doing that. And I think that puts a lot more pressure on someone, um, you know, and, and, and so I, I think that's part of the reason too. And I think that's the difference, you know, between men and women. Mm. And Lauren, um, just quickly, you brought up other sports. I know that you cover a lot of other sports, you know, rugby, high rocks. Are you seeing any trends like this in sports like that as well, or just mostly when you cover CrossFit? I'd say not specifically in high rocks. It's it's far too young. Most of the competitors are in their thirties. Um, if you're looking at something like rugby union, I think it's very different. You're in a very team orientated environment, and yes, okay, maybe you take yourself away from your family, but you just insert yourself into a new one. Could if we're playing devil's advocate here, play a part into why we're seeing people go team earlier on in their career, wanting to find. I know if it was me and I was in that position, I love having people around when I train and being able to bounce off people, and and it's a really enjoyable experience when you've got a support system around you. Um, so perhaps a little bit of that as well. People choosing to go team now because also they know when it's going to happen later. If they want to make a push for their individual careers, then you're going to have to put a serious amount of work into that over a period of time. So team now, indie later, I can totally see that being a thing. Several good points, good variables. Um, a conversation that we'll keep having our eye on as the sport continues throughout the season and it keeps getting older just like us. <laughs> on to topic number two, two down, one to go. I can't believe that we're already here for the CrossFit Open, but what are your 24.3 predictions? Justin, we're going to let you start this round. Yeah, so taking a look at what we've seen uh, the last couple of weeks, um, we've seen no uh, gymnastics at all. Uh, we've seen capacity workouts. Obviously we've seen one that was, uh, well for the elite, a sprint, uh, and then one obviously that went 20 minutes. So what I am guessing, um, is we're going to see a repeat. However, it is not a repeat of an open workout. It is a repeat of the age group quarterfinals from last year. That's a good one. I and know it is say. three rounds of two by 25 foot dumbbell walking <laughs> lunges from the hang oh. position with 20 toes to bar immediately oh. followed by two rounds of two by 25 foot dumbbell walking lunges from the rack position and 15 chest to bars immediately followed by two by 25 dumbbell walking lunges overhead position with 10 bar muscle ups 50 pounds for men 35 pounds for women we have not seen anything like that this specific open, it would be a fantastic finisher to what we have seen the last two weeks. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking that, but Justin. You like how I knew you're going to say it before you even said it? That was good. Yes. <laughs> Chase, were you going to pick that answer? No, but I knew of that one and I, I thought that was a good, it's a good one. It's a good one. I know he even cool. chimed in. I think Chase wanted to give you a point too, Justin. I'll take it. <laughs> okay, Chase, what do you, what do you got? What do you have How for this? How many points week? did I get? You got, you got four, four, bro. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah, come on. I'm giving you four points. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Let's hear it. Papa's got some stories to tell. Everybody. 
<laughs> you gather around <laughs> the campfire. Let me settle in here for the uh, you know. Minutes. So the props to Justin of pulling that one out, even though I saw it coming clearly his day before he even mentioned it. However, <laughs> we have done one gymnastics, sir. Don't say we haven't done any. A burpee is a gymnastics. Oh, come movement. on. It's, it is what it is. I can't say that, you know, I can't just sign off on that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> sign off on that. But we have seen some massive intensity splashed in the field for 24.1 with the dumbbell snatches and the burpees over the dumbbell. And then we went long. We just did some, you know, up heavy on monostructural with the row, double unders, light deadlifts, uh, a lot of jumping and pulling. What I think we'll see, especially what we just saw with Dave Castro dropping the hint of throwing the chicken leg to Doggo and just getting absolutely devoured, I'm thinking legs are going to get hit hard, right? But I don't think they're going to get hit heavy. Reason is if I look at cap with cap programming, CrossFit affiliate programming, 24.3 is going to be on Friday. It's just sitting there as 24.3, but it's not programmed yet. They're doing a version of 13.1 the next day of front squats and bar facing burpees. And I'm like, that's a hundred front squats with ascending weights. I don't know if we're going to see something super high volume with heavy weights and on thrusters or, or front squats. So here's what I'm thinking. All right, legs are going to take a hit. But we do need to see gymnastics. Justin nailed it right there. I'm going to look at, okay, what did we have in 21.3? Everybody thinks we're going to have a two-parter. I don't think we're going to have that. I don't think it's going to be front squats. But I do like ascending skill gymnastics. Let people play in the beginning and then work your way towards the end. I'm looking at three different couplets using three different gymnastics. Toes to bar, which we've seen. Chin over bar pull-ups, which we actually saw in 22.3 for the first time in the open, and chest to bar pull-ups. I don't think we're getting above the bar because the garage gym goer usually doesn't have the ability to do that. Not that we're focused on them, but we, do, we are keeping them in mind. And then I'm thinking of what is going to be a lighter way to cycle maybe some squats. And I'm thinking wall balls. I know we said we're not going to tape floors, but every gym has wall ball targets already ready to go. And I've got a piece of tape outside of my garage at my house. I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to uh, um, shout out to Sally who sent me a, a, a little DM. Rabbit hole. 24.1. We did 90 dumbbell snatches and 90 burpees. 24.2. It was 90 reps per round. 24.3. We are going to do 90 reps of a couplet of wall ball shots for 45 reps and toes to bar for 45 reps, and then wall ball shots for 45 reps, and chin over bar pull-ups for 45 reps, and then a third and final round of 90 total reps for the couplet of 45 wall ball shots and 45 chest bar pull-ups. Good luck, have fun, you got your gymnastics, you got your 90s, and your legs are toast. You're welcome. Where's <laughs> Sally? I wanna give Sally the points for this response. <laughs> You can thank Sally for four points, Chase, because that was pretty involved. I liked the 90. I don't know that my legs are going to like that, but that's okay. Lauren, what do you got for this week? I am okay. never living up to that. I'm not giving it that much thought. <laughs> Woo. Um, I disagree wholeheartedly with Chase. I think we're going to see a two-parter. Um, I agree we're going to see some gymnastic movement. For me, it's probably toes to bar um i think the stat is 12 in the last 14 open something like that but it's um and i do think it's one of those that if you haven't got it and obviously we've seen this real trend of it being very accessible and pushing for rx i think people are likely to push for rx but the scaling movement is very comfortable for people um with a knees to chest and i agree i saw the chicken leg and i went oh your legs are going to get destroyed so i think that will be partnered in a couplet with um wall balls do not seen them yet and it's very easy to do in any gym around the world and garage gym and then I think you'll have a part B, which is like a three rep or a five rep back squat to <gasps> mix it up. Back squat. Hmm. Wow. That would be or amazing. A squat. I mean, and this is based purely on a, a chicken leg <laughs> and not much else. <laughs> from from the rack or from the My ground? WhatsApp has gone wild since <laughs> that came out. My affiliate has <laughs> just gone off on one. with. They're like, we're going to do feed the chickens. And we're like, we're probably not going to do feed the chickens. <laughs> I like it. Creative. Have we ever had a, a back squat in any of our online stages? Nope. No. It's not really a done thing. Front squat from the rack, overhead squat from the rack. Mm -hmm. but we've never mm -hmm. had back squat. Hmm. 
three points, Lauren. The back I'll squat saved three. you because because it's <laughs> thinking out of the box, and I'm here for that. <laughs> It's just a very accessible movement, right? Everyone can do it. And that's what we've seen from nearly every other stage, like, or every other, every other week. That's It's very, very accessible for people who maybe aren't in the sport. Do Okay. okay. This might be going down, a, speaking of rabbit holes, quickly we'll go over. Do we think that three scores is going to be enough to then advance people to quarterfinals? For yes. 25%. 25%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. <laughs> yes. Okay. Without question. Yes. Easy answer. Let's now head into topic number three, which is going to be quarterfinals. It might be premature because, you know, we don't know what the last open workout is, but nonetheless, uh, we have 25% moving to quarterfinals this year, where in previous years, it was the top 10%. From what we know so far, what do you guys think we can expect for quarterfinals, whether it's movements, whether it's uh, format, just really tip of the iceberg. What are you expecting? And Lauren, we will let you start the final round. Oosh. Um, I think we'll see probably traditionally what we have seen in quarterfinals. I don't think that's necessarily going to push the boat out. They've obviously made this very accessible open, which I, for one, have absolutely adored. It's been my favorite open so far. I'll give or take this final workout that I've ever taken part in the last, what, eight, nine years. Um, but because of that, I think suddenly we're going to start seeing our ring muscle ups, our GHDs, uh, well, maybe reintroduction of the shuttle runs, like everything that we've seen over the past couple of years will come back with a vengeance. And then we'll kind of start to separate those who are very viable semifinals athletes versus the rest of us who will get a chance to taste what it's like to go up against the best in our, in our gyms and in our local areas. Two points for Lauren. Kotler, what do you expect for quarterfinals? Well, I'm going to look at it from a slightly different perspective. <laughs> and I think what we're going to see is uh, chaos, complete and utter chaos. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because uh, quarters this year is set up completely differently on the schedule. Um, and because of the limited number of spots, especially in Europe, North America, which have now gone from 60 down to 40, um, you are going to see, and, and the way that it's set up now, unlike previous quarterfinals where it was very challenging to redo workouts, you are going to see people scrounging at the last minute to try to get the best scores to try to get to the next level. Um, and we haven't seen that before. And I'm not looking forward to that <laughs> as a coach or as a judge. Uh, those are the two things that I'm not excited about. Um, I, obviously, we're going to see movements that people will need to be able to do at semifinals. I think that's incredibly important. And it's going to be obviously a level up from what we've seen in the open, which is programmed for the, you know, the 99%. Um, but in general, uh, I, I'm very curious at what the what the cost is going to be this year um, to the athletes' well-being, simply because of the way that the schedule is set up, uh, and uh, and I'm very curious to see the chaos that that's about to occur. As a coach, yeah. how many times would you encourage somebody to repeat a workout if they were in contention to? qualify for semifinals to get to semis mm -hmm. i mean if it, it as many times as you have to i mean let's be honest like that's that's your season you're trying to make it to the next level like if you are realistically in contention i'm not talking about people that are finishing 600th you know what i mean like and and they're like oh it's a wing and a prayer no i'm talking about like if you know that you're in the mix um, and most of the people that are in the mix, I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's either become their livelihood or they're devoting so much time to it. You know, that's the time of the season that, that you, you've got to do whatever you need to do to get to the next level. So, you know, obviously you hope you get it right the first time, but if you've got to redo a workout, you've got to redo a workout. I mean, you know, that's, I mean, at, at this point in time, we're, we're talking about m most people's livelihoods. Um, so, right. But yeah. would you see somebody repeating a workout? three four times uh time. say that again chase there's, there's no time for that i think you can do it i think you'll be able to do it twice you know for sure um okay. you, you, can you do it three times depends on the workout 
Um, I mean, we had someone do it three times last year. We have, you know, or two years ago with the final workout, which was what, two and a half minutes, three minutes with the rowing burpees, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we had a guy who was right on the bubble and he knew he was on the bubble. And so he did it. We didn't love his score. He went back and did it again an hour later, <laughs> you know, so yeah. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot more of that this time, which I'm not excited about, to be honest with you. I, I, I wish it was a one and done situation um, in quarters, but it's going to be what it's going to be. Mm. Three points for Justin Chase. Let's mm. hear it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about some specifics. I haven't heard any yet, so I'm happy to bring that to the table. <laughs> um, here's the thing with quarterfinals this year of how different it's going to be than the previous years. In previous years, we've had three submission windows, which limited the ability to repeat workouts. You couldn't repeat the final day in the first 24 hours that you got to do this. This year, not only are we going from a four-day open span of workouts – we have a six day. They've expanded it to six with two submission windows. So you're going to have three days for submission window one, three days for submission window two, which will allow people to repeat workouts. But let's talk more specifics. What's coming? I don't think anything outside of what we've had the last couple of years are actually going to be in the open. We've had workouts that had GHDs, rope climbs, and shuttle runs. And like, that's not happening because we're taking the top 25%. If you've listened to Dave Casho talk on his weekend reviews, and it, it, he has said is these workouts will actually be accessible for all affiliate owners, not only just to do in their affiliate, but to do them in a group class setting. So that means every event that they're going to program should be doable for a group class. That's taking GHD sit-ups out of it. That's potentially taking shuttle runs and rope climbs out of it because those are things that are not easy to run in a group class setting. Here's what's coming. The heavy barbells are coming. The high skill gymnastics are coming. But the better question is, is how are we going to get there? Last year, a lot of people got ousted to start nine unbroken 25-foot handstand walk sets in event number one. Last year, people got ousted by programming 275 and 185-pound clean and jerks to start a workout. That's not going to happen this year. Oh, come gonna, on. Yeah, it's not happening. We are going to see pay-to-play programming. We're going to see ascending weight programming, ascending skill programming, gate time programming. You have four minutes to do this. If you can't get it, you're out. Everybody's going to be able to play. Most everybody's going to be able to step onto the field of competition, but not everybody's going to be able to finish any single one of these events. And that's how it should be because we are taking less people to semifinals for the first time for North America and Europe at what we used to take people to every semifinal. We had 17 different regions around the world. So we are going to let everybody dip their toe in the water, but only the best will rise to the top and be able to dive in all the way. <laughs> just dip, just dip one little toe. <laughs> Can I tell you what I hope we don't see? Yes. Yeah. V ups and crossover singles. That's what I hope we don't see. Do you hope <laughs> you see crossover double unders? Uh, I, I don't think so. Not with a top 25%. No way. But I just, I mean, just no. Nah. Save it for semis. Yeah, if you want to do it, do that at semis. That's fine, but not at quarterfinals. Okay, Chase, um, I'm going to give you four points, and I'm going to let Lauren break the tie between you and Justin oh. today. But before we get to that, before we get to that, <laughs> let's discuss what are – I think we've done this before, but what are very specific besides V-ups, because I've heard Justin Kotler say it a lot, are movements that we would not want to see in quarterfinals but would want to see in semifinals? Pistols. Okay. Because of I would say pistols as long of like judging risk yeah. reward. One hundred percent judging. The, I don't care about range of motion, difficulty. One hundred percent. You got one camera angle to watch one side of someone's body on a movement that takes two sides to judge. We can barely judge it correctly in person, let alone online to send people to semifinals. Pistols period, should not be an online competition when it just comes to holding the standard to a judge in one side of a camera angle. There's just no right way to do it, and there's no reason to make it harder than it needs to be because, look, at we have to judge all of these videos now to get people to semifinals. Why put our online judges and personal judges and athletes in a position to know that if I have to move this, because some people can do these so stupidly fast. A lot of them can. Now that makes people have to, like, 
alter the way they do things just to stay competitive because of a range of motion or a skill, pistols out of the way. I know we haven't seen it before, but I, it has been on on cap programming. I really hope we don't see knees to elbows. That's another. Uh, yeah, that's that, that. That's another movement that's just brutal to judge. Knees to and, triceps. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So I mean, I, I've you know it, it it came up with weighted pistols, you know, and um, I, yeah, I, I agree with pistols. I also, I, you know, I feel pretty strongly that pistols shouldn't be programmed for for the masters division. Also, I just feel like that's. <laughs> That's a that's a disaster. Um, but on in the background is, is yeah. nodding his head. Yes, yeah, but no knees to you. knees to elbows, please. I you know I really hope that we 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 don't see that movement pop up. That would be a judging nightmare. Okay, Lauren, anything that you don't want to see in quarters but would want to see in semis? Totally different perspective here, coming from knowing Ooh, that I probably five to eight members of my gym will make it there, and then I'm going to have to coordinate that. <laughs> pullovers for this for the, for the pure sake of ah. I, I don't think it's necessarily safe to have perhaps the the 15 to 25 percent trying a movement that could see them slip off a a rig um and not have anything safe underneath uh that as as someone who might be coaching that class fills me with fear I've seen a lot of people working on those in my affiliate who are definitely not making it to semi-final <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Lauren, I am now passing the torch to you. You get to decide who wins this episode of Death By and gets 30 seconds to go on a rant. So this is horrible because either Justin's never going to tell me about his athletes ever again when I'm sidelined trying to get information. 100%. Chase is going to refuse to work with me. Like This is a not a win-win situation for me. Tough. It's very tough. Um, but if we are biting the bullet for his pure determination to be as specific as physically possible, it goes to Mr. Chase Ingram. Ah, oh. <laughs> Justin. I, I'm, I'm also done. because I'm Justin finished. always feels like he's robbed. Finished. So we'll continue that trend. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> you know what? Oh. It, it's going to keep that fire burning. You're going to keep coming back. You're going to bring your A game every single time. Because you know what? You were this close once again. <laughs> this close. Do you feel robbed again? I get robbed every week. I'm just used to it at this point in time. I figured once I showed up with the same shirt as Lauren, you were screwed from the beginning. Jesus. And that's why I gave it to Lauren so she could pick. So it didn't look like I was just twinning with you today, Jake. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's okay though, Justin. You didn't lose. You just came second. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just the first loser. <laughs> All right, Chase. 30 seconds. Talk about whatever is on your mind today. Last week of the Open. Last week of the Open, lessons learned from a personal perspective. And I'll give this to myself. Is, is I'll put myself out there. I've, I've put my videos online. It really, I think I haven't done this in a long time. And, and one, it's I didn't get to do the Open fully last year because I had shoulder reconstructive surgery. And I get to play in the Open for the first time in two years. And I am in the worst shape I have ever been in my entire life uh, of recent memory. And you know what? I'm cool with it. Right? I'm 41. I'm still getting to do all this stuff. I'm doing fine for what I'm doing at the moment, but I know I have a lot more fitness that I can achieve that I will strive for after the Open. And that's some of my favorite part about the Open. I preached this before, and I want to make sure that I'm preaching the same method while I'm living the same lifestyle that I am preaching, is that it's not about your, your place on the leaderboard. It's about the the lessons you learn by putting yourself out there. And a lot of people are afraid to put themselves out there, and I get that. And I know I talked in the front part about being competitive and not being afraid. I am always afraid. I'm nervous before every workout I do. I'm nervous before every open workout, and they've crushed me. And I haven't performed the way that I think I possibly can, but guess what? I'm happy about it. I'm glad I did it. I'm excited to see what comes in 24.3 because that's going to be the third lesson I've learned in the last three weeks. And then I'm looking forward to the next 49 weeks of training for the 2025 CrossFit Open because I'm going to be fitter next year. Wow. So inspiring. I feel like you should be actually standing on a pedestal, like whipping your hair back and forth. Swiveling in my chair in my yeah, office. Yeah. <laughs> inspiring everybody else who took on the Open at their not fittest stage.
stage in life, I second that because um, obviously I'm not as fit as you still, but we're still doing the open. Yeah, we're all out there <laughs> doing it, so it's good. I'm happy to be a part of it. As am I. Good luck. One more week. One more week. <laughs> we'll see what's in store. Um, what day is today? Today is Tuesday. We got two more sleeps until we know what the last workout is. Lauren, thank you for joining us on the show today. Chase, congratulations. Justin, almost congratulations. So close, man. We're, we're so hoping next time you can just squeeze in. <laughs> You're always so close. Yeah, Every thanks. time. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Everybody, good luck in the rest of the Open. Good luck to those qualifying for quarterfinals. And we will see you next time.